welcome to our service for this week. Whether from Christchurch, Good Shepherd or further afield, it's great to be together to worship God today. We've actually reached the third Sunday when we've been able to offer services in church as well as online and by DVD. And I think it's gone really well so far. And I hope as we've worshipped, we've been conscious in our prayers of the unity we have between those who are worshipping at home and those in our church buildings, because we are one family together in God. Today in the church calendar, it's the seventh Sunday after Trinity. My thanks to those who have contributed to the service, Richard for his sermon, David and Tad for the readings, and Jane for the intercessions, as well as our musicians once more. So let's now begin with the call to worship. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help, and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We are here in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the worship of God. So we begin that worship with our first hymn. now take a few moments of quiet as we prepare to confess our sins to God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks to God for his gifts to us. Father, we give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord for birth and life 
and strength of body, for safety, shelter and food, we give you thanks and praise your holy name. For sight and hearing and the beauty of nature, for words and music and power of thought, we give you thanks and praise your holy name. For work and leisure and the joy of achieving, for conscience and will and depth of feeling, we give you thanks and praise your holy name. For grace and truth in Jesus Christ, for the gifts of the Spirit and the hope of heaven, we give you thanks and praise your holy name. Amen. And the collect for this week. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpha to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah, and Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me for another seven years. Jacob did so, and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, Yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy, went and sold all, the, all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he took one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of, of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace, 
where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house, who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words on my lips and the thoughts in my mind be acceptable to you, O Lord. May hearts and minds be open to receive your word and lives changed. Amen. In our Old Testament lesson for this morning, Jacob the trickster gets tricked. Previously, Jacob had literally ruined and wrecked his life. He had deceived and lied to his father to steal the blessing and inheritance from his brother Esau. Esau had threatened his life and now Jacob was on the run. But along the way, a most wonderful thing had happened to Jacob. He saw God's stairway to heaven. He had experienced an encounter with the living God. God had confronted Jacob and led him to make a new commitment, a vow that the Lord, the God of redemption and salvation, would always be his God. He gave Jacob a new life, a new beginning, a fresh start and a, to a brand new day. Immediately after Jacob had his encounter with God, Jacob began to search for what was to become his new family. There is always joy when we are converted and begin a new life or make a new commitment to God. And when this happens to us, we need to do exactly what Jacob did. We need to search for our new family, the family of God, the family of the church, because we need each other's fellowship, help and encouragement. We need to join together in studying God's word, in our service and witness for the Lord. As the Bible says in Hebrews 10.25, Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. Think of a campfire. When all the logs are placed together properly, each log contributes to the fire and continues to burn. When you take one of the logs away from the fire, what happens to that log? It goes out doesn't it? The same goes for Christians. There is no such thing as a successful lone Christian. We must stay together, fellowship together, learn from each other and burn brightly together if we are going to survive. If there's any one thing we should learn from this pandemic is that we cannot go it alone. Phil did not just sit back and say, that's it, I am redundant until we get the all clear. He put on his thinking cap to find ways of getting the Christian message to his flock. First, he brought out the weekly sermon on paperback, delivered to every one of his parishes, parishioners' houses. Then, with the help of the others, he improved on this by getting a complete service streamed to those who had internet. Finally, for those without internet, he produced the service on disc. No, it's not the same as being in church together, but we still felt united in worship as we watched, listened and sang, albeit in our own homes. Let's return again to Jacob. Laban, the brother of Rebekah and the grandson of Nahor, was overjoyed to welcome one of his own flesh and blood. And perhaps Laban was impressed by the strength of Jacob. He may have thought that he would make a good shepherd. And almost certainly Laban considered Jacob to be a possible husband for one of his two daughters. Leah and Rachel were both eligible and Laban never missed an opportunity to drive a hard bargain. Jacob was smitten with one of Laban's two daughters, Rachel. Rachel was unusually beautiful and attractive. On the other hand, 
Leah, the elder sister, wasn't so attractive. Her eyes lacked a certain luster and sparkle. The scripture simply says Leah had weak eyes. Anyway, Jacob was in love with Rachel and he made an agreement to work for Laban for seven years in return for Rachel's hand in marriage. Now it's true that Laban was offering Jacob both a home and a job when Jacob desperately needed both. So Jacob worked seven long hard years for Rachel, but they were joyful years. The years seemed only like a few days because of the great love she ha he had for her. People often wonder if a goal is worth the wait. In our instant society, waiting for anything is seldom encouraged. The most important goals and desires are worth waiting for. Patience is hardest when we need it most, but it is the key to achieving our goals. In our, king, in our gospel lesson that was read earlier, Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then, in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought it. Have we sold all we have in order to obtain the kingdom of heaven? Are we willing to do anything in order to get it? If not, we ought to reevaluate how much we love God. Do we love God enough to do anything in order to inherit eternal life with him? Do we leave, love God enough in order to follow Jesus into the back alleys and the worn out buildings of our city in order to reach the lost for Christ? Let's not get tricked by the master trickster himself, Satan. Remember, once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. After seven years of hard work, there was a shocking interruption to Jacob's joy. Jacob had been deceived. Jacob reaped exactly what he had sown back home amongst his father and brother. On the wedding night, Jacob gets an unexpected wedding present. Rachel's sister, Leah. How did Lepan pull off such a scheme? How was it possible? How could Jacob not know? Back in Jacob's time, there was a custom of heavily veiling the bride on her wedding night. After being heavily veiled, the bride was presented to the bridegroom after darkness had fallen. Therefore, it is not surprising that Jacob discovers the trick Laban played on him only when the morning came. When Jacob woke up on this morning after his wedding with Leah rather than Rachel, he must have been more than a little surprised and upset. A lot of men might have said, forget it, I'm not going to work another seven years for Rachel, and then stormed off. But Jacob loved her, and she alone was the prize that he sought. What do we love the most? What is the prize that we seek? Remember our gospel lesson, Jesus tells us, the kingdom of heaven is like the merchant looking for the fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Jesus doesn't tell us how long or how hard we're going to have to search for that pearl. Jacob kept his focus on the one he loved, not the seven additional years of labour, nor the injustice of his father-in-law. It can be so easy for us to become frustrated with the church and just quit. The world is literally littered with Christians who have given up the faith when obstacles have gotten in their way. If we focus on the expectation we have of others, we will definitely be disappointed at some point in our Christian journey. If we focus on the promises of God, 
we will finish the race and obtain the prize. Jacob kept Leah even after he was able to finally marry Rachel and Leah became the mother of Jacob's first four sons which include Levi and Judah who is the ancestor of David and his royal line and ultimately of Jesus Christ our Saviour and Lord. It's amazing how things work out for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Jacob began his life as a defeatful trickster and he had been on the run for his life but God had mercy on him and God revealed himself to him and gave Jacob a new life. Jacob kept the promise he had made with God. Even when the going got rough, Jacob was able to keep his focus on God and his faith in God. After Jacob saw God's stairway to heaven, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He would never forget that experience, and he would never forget that God is with him at all times, through the tough times as well as the good times. And this is exactly what we must remember. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in you we are able to find our true treasure. Why do we strive after that which is clay rather than eternity? Free us from the pursuit of that which glitters so that we might obtain the treasure of your kingdom which is hidden in you. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together as we say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, help us to quiet our minds for a moment as we consciously turn towards you. It doesn't matter where we are physically, for you are always there with us. We just need to be still 
and listen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the church throughout the world in this scary and unprecedented time. Thank you for the opportunities that have come our way to reach people who would never have come to church and to spread the gospel in new and exciting ways. We thank you that people are turning to you in prayer and to the church for support and guidance like never before. Help us to be ready to welcome them when you send them our way. We pray for our local ministry team who have worked so hard to look after us and minister to us and to everyone involved in the preparation of services, both online and in person. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for everyone affected by the ongoing effects of the virus and as lockdown is loosened further, we pray there is no second wave. We pray for teachers as they come to the end of the most challenging term of their lives. May they get a proper rest this summer. We lift before you everyone working in the NHS and in social care. Bless them richly, Lord, with the funding and resources that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to come out of lockdown and change the world. Don't let us return to how things were before, with plastic drowning the oceans, with racism policing the streets, with division, violence and war. Help us to come together to use this opportunity to change society for the better forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those we know who are ill at this time whether in body, mind or spirit. We pray for all the staff involved in their care. We pray especially for those with depression, dementia or other chronic conditions. We pray for an easing of pain and a restful night's sleep. We pray for the carers, for family and friends who give so much support and love and who have struggled with the necessary distance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we remember those who have died and their families and friends who mourn them. We trust in your promise of eternal life. We know that they are safe with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Father, we pray for ourselves. Help us to hold fast to your promises, that whatever is going on with us, you can use us and our situation to advance your kingdom. Bless us, Lord, that we would recognise our gifts, that we would use them for the glory of your name, that we would support and uphold those around us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Creator God, you give us seed to sow and bread to eat. Make us thankful for all we have received and generous in supplying the needs of others, so all the world may give you thanks and glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we say the grace together, let's hold in our minds those who are part of our fellowship, uh, and yet we are separated from, and ask God to bless them. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Yeah.